This is the June 2011 exam. We're on page six. The graph below represents the displacement of a particle uh, in a medium over a period of time. So we've got some medium that's going up and down. And over time, if you were to graph it, it would look like that. So uh, you know, we've got the displacement in centimeters. And we've got the time. All right, that looks good. The amplitude. Well, the amplitude is defined, so this is a vocabulary question. The amplitude is defined as the distance above or below some rest position. So it's four centimeters above, it's four meters below. So the amplitude is four centimeters. 27. What is the period of a water wave if four waves, so waves, uh, there's four of them, uh, pass a fixed point in 10 seconds. Time is 10 seconds. The definition of period is seconds per wave. Seconds per wave. So let's just do that. We've got 10 seconds divided by four waves. Uh, so that's about two and a half seconds each. Question 28. The diagram represents a periodic wave. Which point on the wave is 90 degrees out of phase with point P? Well, this is a, based on a circle. 90, 180, 270, 360. Complete circle. So let's see. There's 90. There's 180. There's 270. And that's 360. Uh, and they want the point that's 90 degrees. So I'm going with B. B is 90 degrees out of phase with point P. Question 29. What is the wavelength of a 256 hertz wave? You need to realize that this is frequency. Frequency is 256 hertz. And it's in air. It's standard temperature and pressure. Speed of light in a vacuum. Speed of sound in air at standard temperature and pressure. Speed of sound is 3.31 times 10 to the 2 meters per second. So velocity 331 meters per second. And then on the formula sheet, we know that the uh, velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. So if I say velocity equals frequency times wavelength, I know f frequency and velocity. I'm looking for wavelength. Divide both sides by frequency. So I've got 331 meters per second divided by 256 uh, waves per second. And um, so it's going to be 331 divided by 256. So I'm getting one point something. So the units are uh, meters per second. Frequency is waves per second. Seconds cancel. We're left with meters per wave. The wavelength 1.29 meters per wave. All right, here's a real useful scenario. What's the minimum total energy released when an electron and its antiparticle, its positron, annihilate each other? Uh, this is uh, the famous E equals m c squared equation. Uh, c is the speed of light. And mass would be the mass of the particle in question. And so an electron has got a mass of... The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And I got me an electron and a positron, the anti-electron. Same mass. And uh, speed of light in a vacuum. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So I take uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Square that, multiply that by uh, the mass of an electron, multiply it by the same mass for its antiparticle, and I end up with, uh, and I think we get that. I wonder if I do my math right. Give it a try. Question 31. Which statement correctly describes one characteristic of a sound wave? A sound wave can travel through a vacuum. That is not true. Sound can't travel through a vacuum, which makes you wonder why vacuums are so loud. Two, a sound wave is a transverse wave. In fact, sound waves are longitudinal waves. You compress a region, and then it expands. So it's, that's not true. The amount of energy a sound wave transmits is directly proportional to the wave's amplitude. That, in fact, is correct. 
Amplitude is wave energy. The amount of energy a sound wave transmits is inversely relative to the wave's frequency. The pitch, higher pitch, lower energy, lower pitch, higher energy, that's, uh, that's not true. That doesn't make sense. Correct answer is three. Question 32. I did this for you. A 256 hertz vibrating tuning fork is brought near a non-vibrating 256 hertz tuning fork. The second tuning fork begins to vibrate. Which phenomena causes the non-vibrating tuning fork to begin to vibrate? This is done with the resonant boxes. You got a tuning fork mounted on a box. You hit one tuning fork and it vibrates the tuning fork, but also the box and the air in it. That causes the air in the other box to resonate which causes the box to resonate, which causes the tuning fork to resonate. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear it. I've said the word resonate a bunch of times, so let's just go ahead and assume that this is a resonant phenomena. Resistance, that doesn't make sense. Refraction and reflection, nope. Resonance. Astronauts traveling towards the Earth in a fast-moving spacecraft receive a signal, a radio signal, from an antenna on Earth. Compared to the frequency, the wavelength of the radio signal emitted, so we send out a signal. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. From the antenna, the radio signal received by the astronaut. Now, because he's moving towards it, He's actually going to encounter more waves per second than are being uh, transmitted. If it was just parked, he'd hear the same frequency, but because he's moving towards it, he gets more of those waves per second. So uh, it's going to be a higher frequency. And so now a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength, or a higher frequency and a longer wavelength. If you're uh, getting a higher frequency, they're going to have to be closer together, shorter wavelength. This is known as the Doppler effect. Question 34. On the atomic level, energy and matter exhibit the characteristics of particles? Yes, they do. Waves? Yes, they do. Neither particles nor waves. No. Both particles and waves. Yes, they do. Okay, question 35. Which particles are not affected by the strong force? I can't remember this. What are they talking about? So let's see if we can't figure it out anyway. Hadrons, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Well, let's do this. We go to the classification of matter. And we have the hadrons as opposed to the leptons. So the hadrons have three quarks, which are protons and neutrons. So hadrons includes protons and neutrons. So they're looking for which particles are not affected by the strong force. So if I said a proton, I would also be saying a hadron. If I said a neutron, I'd also be saying a hadron. So none of these can be true. So the other characteristic of matter is this grouping called the leptons. And over here are a list of some of the more popular leptons. And in fact, there's the electron. Which particle is not affected by the strong force? The electrons. The electrons on the uh, other side are affected by electrostatics, electricity, uh, that kind of stuff, the electric forces.